At this point, I think you can agree with me, this app component does not look good. appears to be duplicated. Now if we go back over into our code base over here, without a doubt we know that this div with class name of comment all the way down to the closing part of that tag right there, that thing is basically duplicated three times. Now of course we know that very very well because we did a copy paste in the last video, but I think you probably understand what's going on here. We want to find or isolate some portion of our application or some JSX that appears to be copy pasted either in a single component or in many places inside of our project. The next thing we're going to do is try to provide a name for the component that we're going to generate. We're going to eventually take that duplicated JSX and put it into a brand new standalone component. And one of the most important things around that process is giving that component a good, meaningful name. Now, in this case, I would say that the purpose of this JSX right here is to display a single comment or maybe details about a single comment. So I might give this thing the name of something like component or excuse me, comment detail because that's what it's doing. It's giving the details on a single comment. So the next thing we'll do is then create a new file to house the component that we're going to create to kind of deduplicate the JSX inside of our application. This file is going to have the same name as the component. So we were, are going to now make a new file called comment detail inside of our SRC folder. All right, so I'm going to flip back over to my code editor inside the SRC folder. I'm going to make a new file called comment detail.js, like so. Now I want you to take a look at the nomenclature or kind of the style of the name that I provided right here. Usually React components are written in uppercase or kind of proper form. So that is comment detail for the name of this file, as opposed to something like comment detail or comment detail or anything else like that. So simply comment detail with a capital C and a capital D. So now that we've created this file with the appropriate name, we're going to create a new component inside that file. And we're going to move that duplicated JSX over to this new component. And this process is going to be a little bit longer, so let's do this right now. Inside this file, I have to first import the React library at the very top. Then after that, I can make a new function that is going to serve as this comment detail component. So I'll say const comment detail. That's going to be an arrow function like so. And then inside of here, I'll put a return statement with the set of parentheses like so, because remember, that's what we always do anytime we know that we're going to have a big block of JSX. And then finally, I'm going to go back over to where I have that kind of duplicated JSX, and I'm going to take that duplicated stuff right here, so everything from div class name comment all the way down to the closing div right there, so a total of about 13 lines or so, and I'm going to cut that, and then take it over and paste it inside of my comment detail like so. Then I'll go ahead and save the file. Okay, so that's it. We just extracted a touch of CSS out to a separate component, but we're not quite done just yet. So the last thing we have to do is now make sure that this new component is configurable by using React's props system. So the React props system is a very important system for us to understand. And this is a system and a topic that we're gonna spend a pretty good amount of time on. Before we talk about exactly what props are, I want you to take a look at the JSX that we've just put into our comment detail component. At present, it has a hard-coded author, a hard-coded time, and a hard-coded comment content inside of here as well. And chances are, not every single comment that we want to show inside of our application is going to have a identical author, time, and content assigned to it. So anytime that we now try to show this comment detail on the screen as a component, we probably are going to want to be able to customize it when we create the component. And that's what this entire props system is all about. It allows us to configure exactly how a component behaves or the content that it shows. Now let's take a quick pause right here. When we come back to the next section, we'll start to expand on this prop system a little bit more.